Serpstat is an all-in-one SEO tool. It really competes with the likes of Moz Pro, Ahrefs, and I think it's most similar to SEMrush, but it's really its own thing. This is Steven from Martech Wiz, and today we're going to take an in-depth look at Serpstat, the SEO tool. Over uh, the last few weeks, we've been uh, using Serpstat, and we've so far liked what we've seen with the tool. It does come in at a lower price point, so we're going to see in this Serpstat review if the quality meets the quality of the competitors, which we looked at all of them in depth as well. And we'll go through all the positives, the negatives, and some of the unique things that the Serpstat tool has. But first, you should know this video is a small part of a massive project we did on SEO tools. We analyzed the top SEO tools, including SEMrush, Moz Pro, Ahrefs, Majestic, and more. And we conducted rigorous tests on over 50 different factors. So you can see the full in-depth reviews along with video of all these SEO tools on martechwiz.com, our site. In addition, you can get a free copy of our PDF buying guide, and this encapsulates all of the most important learnings that we picked up over this project. So we wanted to pass those along to you and make sure that you don't miss any important details when you are in the market for an SEO tool. So you can click on the link on screen or the link in the description and this will take you to martechwiz.com where you can get those reviews, the videos, and the free PDF buying guide. So to get started with Serpstat, you can actually just start from the main screen here and let's search for the Beatles to get started. So when you do a search, it's going to pull up the tool. It's a web-based tool, uh, software as a service tool. So there's nothing to install. It's all uh, done within your browser. And there's really five main sections. So this took us straight to the keyword research section because that's what we're that because because we put in a keyword. It also has a website analysis section, backlink analysis section, rank tracker, and site audit. Tools really isn't built out yet. So it really has the main pieces that you would expect to see in an all-in-one SEO tool. Um, the only thing, the only uh, piece it really doesn't have at this point is a Chrome extension. So I'm not sure if they're planning to add one in the future, uh, but that's something that all the other SEO tools has that Serpstat doesn't. Um, so going in uh, to the tool, you can see with the user interface and uh, the user experience is really nice. Um, it's just a clean design. The visuals look good. The tables um, the there's a lot of tool tips so a really um, even though there's a lot of information it doesn't feel intimidating um, they have a lot of information to help you things are very clear and uh, the terminology is clear so we really enjoyed the, the user experience and found it a joy to use um, going to website analysis this is kind of the the uh, the bulk of the tool here and where most of the sections are so here you can do analysis on different sites or domains for basically SEO or for PPC so like SCMrush and not every all-in-one SEO tool uh, has PPC, which is ad data, pay per click, but SERPs that does have it. So, getting started, let's uh, search the Beatles.com in the domain analysis. So, you'll see it starts, puts you in an overview section, and this is going to have a lot of the most pertinent information that you're going to want to um, look at, and you have it here at a glance for um, different types of SEO analysis that you do. So, you've visibility here in terms of how um, many keywords are searched in Google for. You have estimated traffic, 1.8 million, 25,000 organic keywords that it ranks for. I believe this is the top 100, yes. Um, it doesn't do any PPC, any advertising in that format, so you don't, don't have anything there. And then you have different tables here. So we're gonna see all these tables, so we won't go through them one by one. Uh, we'll see them in other sections, but you can just get a sense here. Um, they have this nice feature where when you uh, put the cursor on the graph, it actually shows you the data points. You can see keywords over time, highest vis visibility pages, backlinks, and just a lot of information is in this tool. And let's 
drill deeper into the SEO research. So the first section under SEO research is positions. What I really like about positions, this gives you all of the keywords that this website, thebeatles.com, ranks for. So it's not like you have to tell it what positions you want to track. It's giving you all the positions because it just pulls that um, from its crawlers. So it not only gives you the positions, it also gives you the SERP features, search engine results page features. So those are the additional information that's shown on Google and the different boxes like a local carousel, a knowledge graph, etc. It has the position and then some of that keyword data that you searched like the monthly search volume and cost and competition for PPC and different other uh, uh, results. Other things that you're going to see on almost every page, you can look at, at um, many different countries. So if you want to change countries, you can easily do that. Uh, by changing the country and you can also it has some nice filters here too so for example if you only want to see things with search volume over 100 you can go ahead and do that and then it will show you only keywords that get searched for over a hundred times per month you can export of course and really they've thought of most things that you want to do when you are researching a domain. So what's next? Well, next is competitors. And this shows you what are the competitors in organic search. So what that means is these are the sites that share common keywords. So when you're searching for the Beatles or the Beatles album or Rubber Soul, this is going to show you all of the different organic or all the different sites that also rank for the organic uh, keywords. So you see here, sometimes it takes a little bit of time to load. Not all pages, but just some of the pages for some reason take a long time to load. And it's probably a little longer. I find that, that, that the SAS tools are longer when I'm recording. So I haven't seen it be a huge problem. In terms of the competitors, You'll see here it has all the competitors, but there's a couple nice features here. One is it shows the common keywords and the missing keywords. So Beatles Bible, which say is their biggest competitor in terms of shared keywords, they are ranking for 55,000 keywords. So they have 11,000 common keywords in um, common with the Beatles.com and then 44 so-called missing keywords and that basically means that Beatlesbible.com is ranking for them but the Beatles.com is not so this is opportunity if this is your site that you can lock into for any of these sites where are they ranking for that you aren't and is that a keyword that you should be ranking for another great feature is this change the list of competitors all these tools, of course, are built on algorithms. All the data is pulled automatically. And a lot of times you're going to find things that maybe don't fit, like Apple.com really isn't a competitor, right? So say you don't want it in the list. You can just simply delete that. And if you want something else in the list, you can just put you know XYZ.com or whatever, and then it will change that. So next time you pull up competitors, that new list will be there. Domain versus domain is another great feature. This is where you can compare the domain you're researching, whether it's your own or any domain, and you compare it versus two competitors. Nice thing they have automat automatically populate these with um, some of the biggest um, competitors from the prior screen. And you, after you go ahead and compare it, it will give you some visualizations and a chart on the different keywords that they share and again ones that are unique so it's a great um, then diagram and basically you can see all the word all all the keywords that they all share actually in this case there's zero keywords that they all share um, but the different keywords that are shared between beatles.com and beatles bible and all the different permutations of the combinations where there's either unique keywords or shared if you want to drill down into any of these, you can click on the link and that's going to bring you, in this example, these are all the unique keywords that um, say this is our site, that we, thebeatles.com, 
is ranking for that the others ones aren't um, with some uh, cost per click data as well. It's just great information. Uh, top pages is a nice tool too. You're going to see this in a lot of all-in-one SEO tools, but they do it a little bit differently here. And here they rank it by default on the amount of organic keywords that the site is ranking for or the URL is ranking for. Um, you can also do it off of Facebook shares if you want to do that. LinkedIn shares, which is nice. Google Plus and potential traffic. Now, potential traffic is different than estimated traffic. Potential traffic is looking at, um, it's a hypothetical number of if this URL ranked number one for all of the organic keywords, all 80, they would get approximately 4.5 thousand visits per, I'm assuming, month. Um, so it's almost like looking at the market potential versus the market size. Um, so it's good to see the overall um, potential, but that's not the estimated traffic that this URL is getting. One of the most unique and one of the most useful things is the tree view, which is the next subsection under SEO research. This shows every URL of the site that you're researching in alphabetical order. So the beta.beatles, etc. The cool thing about this though, it shows every keyword that every URL, so every page of the website, it shows what keywords that they're ranking for. So dev.thebeatles, etc. Hey Bulldog. You know, hyphen YSS is ranking for these three. Uh, the Beatles.com is ranking for, of course, a whole bunch of different keywords, and this goes on for pages. And then it shows all of them. So it's saying that we're running up against a limit here, which is interesting. I haven't seen that before. But basically, um, we'll show you the limits of the pricing later. But this is basically, like I said, it's going to show every URL and what keyword that it's ranking for. So just uh, a fantastic tool, fantastic information and uh, really unique information that I haven't seen anywhere else. And we've looked at all of the major tools. So that's SEO. Now we're going to go into PPC, which is pay-per-click advertising. Keywords. This is going to tell you what keywords that it's um, paying for for paid keywords. Now, uh, the Beatles.com doesn't do any paid advertising. So let's look at Rolling Stone instead and see what keywords they are paying for. So if someone organically searches, you know, Rolling Stones magazine, this is the ad that's going to show. So it's great for real life ad examples. It also shows you some other information here like SERP um, information, cost per click. Really, really great stuff. In addition to that, it shows you competitors. So who else is bidding for those paid keywords? Uh, domain dom domain versus domain is similar to what we saw in SEO research, but it instead shows the, um, instead of organic keywords, it shows uh, paid keywords. So we can take a quick look at that. And this you can see what are maybe some good um, keywords that you should be bidding on that you're currently not. So that's a really nice um, graphic and information there. Ad examples gives you just that. More ad examples similar to what we saw on a previous screen. But this gives you a little different look at it and some new information. So this is cool because it's kind of like the tree view. It shows you all of the different ads and then what keywords trigger those different ads. So this has 144. So you can kind of um, drill down into all of them or if you just want to take a kind of quick browse through what are the different keywords that are uh, being paid or bid for and what are the ads that are generated by those, you can see them there. Ad research is a similar look but gives you some other information based on the um, URL that the ads send it to. So really cool stuff. Okay, the next session is batch analysis. This is pretty, pretty straightforward, but a very valuable thing to have. Uh, this is a bulk tool. So you can put up to 200 domains in this and get bulk information um, on any of these factors or from any of these countries' search engines. 
Infra infographics is really just a bunch of different graphs. Um, a lot of things that we've seen in here, some new graphs, but I don't think we need to go in that specifically. It's really not infographics like um, you might be used to the phrase. It's more just basically charts and graphs. But let's now go into keyword research. So they do a solid job on keyword research as well. Um, the only downside is that this doesn't have clickstream data. So right now I believe only Ahrefs and Moz have clickstream data that they include in their keyword volume. So it might not be as accurate as those, but you know we found it to be as good as most tools out on the market. Um, so it definitely should meet most needs. So you'll see here, these are all the um, organic keywords. Um, or basically the keyword suggestions. These are the suggestions for ads. What are uh, some ads you could you could go through there? Competitors in organic search. Um, other sites that, or basically any site that comes up when you are searching for the Beatles. Then you'll see the competitors graph. Um, a nice visualization of the different sites. Um, I didn't quite get what precision and recall was. Um, but they do explain it here, and I'm sure um, if you ask support, they can give you a kind of clear definition of it. Um, support is very helpful. We use support many different times, and they were very um, responsive, very quick to get back to us. And you see you have a lot of information there. But let's go into uh, some other stuff than keyword research. So here you're going to see in SEO keyword research, um, basically keyword suggestions, but a longer list. So it's going to have, of course, the uh, the volume, um, the uh, the volume in Google, the volume last month, the cost and competition. Uh, the one thing that doesn't really uh, have that we've that we've seen thus far, and maybe we're just missing it, is um, a keyword difficulty metric. Um, one unique thing that they have is social domains. So what this is, this is looking at the top 100 results if you search for, in this case, the beetle, and it's looking at what social media platforms pop up in those results. So I'm not sure exact use case where you would use this, um, but it possibly could be a good thing to have depending on what kind of SEO research that you're doing. Cluster research looks at the keywords and then what are what are the other competitors based on what they call connection strength. So for example, five competitors are um, are ranking for this keyword, the four members of the Beatles, four are ranked for all members of the Beatles, and so on. Um, so this provides you this different look in terms of how many competitors are ranking, but also it also looks at more of uh, semantically connected keywords as well. Search suggestions, this gives you just that, more search suggestions. Um, a really nice tool you can add if you want to look at you know anything with love, for example, then it's going to uh, just provide keywords with that. So very easy to use, very straightforward. Um, you can do a batch export if you want to look at only um, search suggestions that have question or uh, interrogative, um, like who, what, where, when. You can do that as well. But you can actually do that in another section. So we'll show you that. And I believe it's coming up soon. So you have top pages by keywords, competitors by keywords. Pretty straightforward. Um, similar to what we saw before, but a different look. In uh, pay-per-click research, this is going to provide you with um, different keywords, some of which are um, good to buy. So it actually looks at um, some of the competition and can give you some suggestions or you can figure out on your own in terms of what are some of the best keywords to buy based on competition, cost per click, etc. So you're going to have all those. Uh, people that are advertising for uh, the Beatles and the love is still here. So that's great information. And you're going to have competitors, again, add examples and add research. But what I wanted to show you next was a content marketing. So this is um, a cool feature. It's similar to what I was just talking about with the questions. So basically this looks at 
um, what are all the search suggestions, but only looking at the questions. That's called the content marketing tool because this is basically saying if you're running a blog about the Beatles, for example, and you want to write a bunch of different articles, this is a great place to start where you basically have tons of different prompts of articles to write because these are what people are searching for and what they want to know. Uh, which Beatles album features the song And I Love Her? Who Wrote Love Me Do by the Beatles, etc. So just a great, you have some great um, keyword analysis here and fabulous visualization, fabulous information and great for content marketing. Uh, SERP analysis, SERP stands for search engine results page. And this basically looks at the uh, top 100 results. Sometimes you need to refresh the page to get the information. I'm not sure why I'm not getting any. Usually it shows a list of a hundred. Hmm. I've had a few hiccups with the tool, but really nothing too bad. Okay, here we go. So basically, this shows the top 100. It's basically a replication of Google, um, where it shows you the top 100 results. But you can see everything that you would need in one page. It shows you the ads. If there's any SERP features, which there are, it shows you here. There's news, knowledge graph, local carousel, etc., and some other key statistics that you would want to know from the search engine uh, results page. So next is backlink analysis. Backlink analysis is, of course, huge in SEO. If you want to build links, you want to know who um, is linking out to basically usually competitors. So here we need to put in a domain, and it's going to show us who is backlinking. So yeah, for, for some reason, you need to put it down here. Oops, Beatles.com. Now, it has a partnership with Majestic. So some of the um, information I guess from Majestic SEO is just another tool you might be familiar with. Really not an all-in-one SEO tool, not at all. It's more at Majestic is uh, specializes in backlinks. I'm not sure exactly where it breaks down, but SERPs that uses Majestic information and their own crawler robots. So I know that the referring pages um, so this is basically all of the backlinks. So this is basically saying that the Beatles.com is 442,000 backlinks, but it only knows 345,000. So it's a difference between the two numbers. So this is the ones that you can actually get access to. And this number, I believe, comes from Majestic SEO because Majestic always has the same number of referring pages, which is basically backlinks. So that's what that is. Here it also introduces a new statistic, kind of odd that they bury it down here, but the page rank and trust rank. So this is going to be similar to like Moz Page Authority or Trust Flow and Majestic. And this basically looks at the amount and quality of links that they have. So you can see the backlinks that they build up over time, the new and lost, the referring domains, which is basically the sites, not the pages. Um, that are referring to them. Anchor text. You want to make anchor text is the text that's on a link. So if it if it says the Beatles, or it might just say Beatles, or it might say um, website, what what have you, when you're clicking. And then you're going to have the referring domains here. So this is great if you're a competitor of thebeatles.com and you want to see who's linking out to thebeatles.com. I want to possibly get links from them. This is going to have all the information you need. Um, and it also nicely has the page rank and trust rank here. So if a site, you know, has like a zero, like the bodies.de, you know, probably not a site you want to go after. It actually might be a spammy site. So that's good to know. Oh, and here's where if you want to look at top pages by backlinks, you can do that. So you normally this is how um, tools will delineate top pages. Um, and with SERPstat, there's a lot of different ways you can slice and dice the top pages. Here is how you would do it 
by um, referring domains or referring pages. Now, one thing I would like to see, not every table has um, sorting arrows on the column headers. So that would be a nice thing to have. Hopefully they get that in the future. Another really nice and possibly my favorite feature is the rank tracker. This tracks your positions in Google. So we're going to look at my own website now that I set up and having it tracking different positions and basically tells you how many you have in the top one, top three, top five, etc. Um, and it checks every day where you are, which is pretty phenomenal. So it's going to give you a lot of real-time information, shows you what's up, what's down. It shows you the um, the volume, so how many searches for that. It's got a nice trend graph here. And these you can sort by position. Um, so that's normally how I sort it, and I see what are some of my top articles doing. It looks like they're pretty steady at this point. Um, so you can see no change. If you just want to look at the ones that improved or the ones that declined, you can do that. So great options there. Okay, next is history. This is a nice way that you can look at in the past, the changes over time through line graphs and also through this nice tool. So the default is seven days, but you can change this. And I haven't been tracking for that long, but you can track this, you know, year to date, previous month, uh, last week, yesterday, etc. So a lot of good options here in terms of getting historical data. And then it shows you in a color coded view um, the changes. Next is competitors. And this is an interesting look because it looks at the share of traffic. So this is the share of traffic for the keywords that I'm tracking, uh, the 20, 30 or so that I'm tracking. And these are all the sites that are basically my competitors based on the rankings. Uh, so just another look at competitors. This section also has some really nice graphics and visualizations around um, history and competitors too. So this is looking over time at Twitter um, as a competitor, which of course is in a direct competitor, Moz.com, Facebook, SmartBusinessTrends.com. This is really cool too. You can see over the dates where um, the, not only yourself, but where competitors change. So G2 crowd went from, you know, six to nine to 11, back to 10. Um, overall for visibility of the keywords that I'm tracking. So the different thing here is that when they track your keywords, they're not just tracking your domain and your position, but they're tracking the whole 100 and they keep track of that. Um, they keep that in their database. So that's how they can provide some of this very interesting data and see over time, not only how you change, but also how competitors change. So really cool stuff. Next is site audit. So this is a technical SEO audit when you set up your um, account. There's really nothing to set up besides this. You just let it know your site and then it crawls it. Um, so this will then give you what are some of the issues with your site. It delineates them from high priority, middle priority, low priority. It gives you an overall score called the uh, SERPstat Domain Optimization Score a lot of vi visualization of potentially important things that you want to fix. So I won't go through all of these. It's probably be pretty dry and pretty boring, but this goes, uh, if you uh, have a site, of course, this is important stuff to know. A nice feature that I will touch on quickly is the custom overview. The nice thing about this is you can basically train the um, crawler on what you want it to look at and maybe what are some things that it doesn't need to look at. For example, a lot of the errors that I got um, that are high priority, I believe are pages that don't have what's called a meta description and that's what's in the snippet when you search in Google. So it's important to have it. But the pages I don't have that meta description are pages that I'm not having Google index. So there's really no point of having the meta description. So it's not really an error. So, but if I do that custom overview, I believe that I can basically just tell it to ignore that error 
and that's not going to be flagged as a high priority issue going forward. So uh, let's take a look next at pricing. As I mentioned, they're unique in that they have a very, very low price introductory plan. Now, it is limited to a fair amount. Um, actually, in terms of features, it has almost every feature. It doesn't have missing keywords and cluster research and access to the API, but it has the vast majority of features, so it's really generous there. Um, 300 queries a day should be sufficient for most um, average folks, whether you're like an in-house, definitely for entrepreneurs or marketer or someone who's doing kind of SEO, not as their full-time position, maybe 300 would be a little low for a uh, full-time SEO, but the real uh, restriction for anyone's going to be these 100 results per report. So basically what this is saying is that if there's 2,000 backlinks for a site that you're researching, it's only going to show 100. But for $19 per month, and even less if you get the annual plan 20% off, um, it's still really a good deal. So this $69 plan is more what's going to compete with the $99 plans of the others, and it really has all the features that you would want, and then it ramps up the results where 15,000 results for a port, 4,000 queries per day, almost anyone be, would be able to use that, but the plans go up if you need it, and they even have business plans that go all the way up to 2,500 per month, and if you go for three years, you get 40% um, off. So basically the plans after the $69 one are just, you get more queries, more track keywords, more projects that you can track. Um, you get white labeled reports and branded reports if that's important, I believe only in business. Um, but in terms of the $69 plan, you're gonna get all the features that you need and a good amount of data. In terms of support and training, the support, as I mentioned, was very good. The training documentation is also very good. They actually have like something called a, a SERP stat um, academy. They have a bunch of different training. So you can see that all there. They also have a rank here. Um, this is like the Alexa rank, basically, where it's ranking the uh, sites over um, basically the, the, you know, the top sites of the world. So that could be important to have depending on what type of research that you're doing. So that's SERPstat, um, really a fantastic tool. Um, we really enjoyed using it and think um, it's gonna have a very bright future and we'd like to see it as another option in the all-in-one SEO tool market. Thanks for watching and take care.